Hi folks, let's walk through machining four of these Mars Curiosity rover end caps. So Beatty Robotics came to us, they tried 3D printing these and they just didn't look right. And they said, you know what, we really want these to be machined and we want them to look great. So how do you tackle this as a job shop job? The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna machine all four at once. We're gonna use a super glue technique and the goal is a one and done approach. Cutting up some raw material. As a job shop job, we want to do this efficiently, but we want to do it well. So we're using the super glue technique. If you aren't familiar with it, it is a phenomenal way to securely hold work pieces, even with flood coolant. And it's going to give us access to all sides of the part so that we can make four of these in one setup and be done. using a 3D adaptive strategy with a quarter inch end mill to rough out most of the material. Next up, using a 1 8 inch spot drill to spot the four drills on the top of the part and a quarter inch mill drill for the larger spots. Switching our tools to a number 18 drill, that's 55 thousandths of an inch, pretty small. Our VF2 has a 12,000 RPM spindle, so we're able to run what I like to use for standard high-speed steel drills, 150 surface feet per minute. We're using a deep drilling fuller track strategy basically to peck through and make sure we've got good chip evacuation. Drilling out the other four holes with a number 18 drill, it's about 0.17 inches or 4.3 millimeters. Next up, rigid tapping the four holes on the top of each hub with a 1.6 millimeter by 0.35 millimeter tap. The tap itself is only about 60 thousandths of an inch in diameter, but they ran great and we have found that rigid tapping has been incredibly reliable. So we put in a force tool change and what that does is we've got option stop turned on on the Haas. So even though the operation before it and after it was T14, so there isn't a tool change event occurring, the force tool change allows option stop to activate. That way we can walk over to this machine. We're gonna take one last look at what that part looks like with the adaptive done before we start our 3D machining. And that adaptive operation is so important to leave us with a more consistent amount of material. That way as our ball end mill is going over our material and that helps improve surface finishes. We started with a traditional scallop and then we added a secondary scallop that reorients and does a slightly better job of machining along the taper of these inside corners. If we did this part yet again, I have a couple other tricks up our sleeve to I think do an even better job of getting superb surface finishes out of it. So stick around, we may rerun these parts simply to show how can we even push ourselves to make a better part. Finally, a very light edge break around the edge of our part. And then a 1 8 inch end mill, we're sliding around the profile of the part. We're actually staying a few thousandths of an inch off, but this separates the final part from the rest of the super glue base strip of material. And they're ready to come up. So again, this is what's so awesome about the super glue fixture is there's no stress, pretty good process for liability. We're able to use our razor blade and paint scraper tools to remove the parts without damage or marring them. And the tape peels right off the back of the parts. And from a job shop's perspective, we've now got all four parts done. The programming took longer than running the parts themselves, 
But one of the keys to reducing that programming time is making use of Fusion 360 templates card here to the NYC CNC templates that we use. It can really help improve your efficiency, your productivity, and your profitability uh, running a job shop. Folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you soon.